Welcome to the High as Fuck Podcast with your boy Matt Jackson and Joe motherfucking cool. What's up, bitches? What's up, everybody? How you and doing? It's still motherfucking February, and we're here watching St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Where they massacred at Valentine's and something. Like, this man just hates love. He we loves to hate and hates the love. Day massacre. We've got uh, last man standing match between The Rock and Mankind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Triple H. Is it China and Triple H? McMahon and Stone Cold. And then the first match right now, we got Gold Dust. Dust. <laughs> Dustin motherfucking Rhodes. Yeah, boy. Um, He does that. <sighs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gold dust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gold mm-hmm. dust. Mm-hmm. Old yeah. dusty. Mm-hmm. 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 Remember that? Yeah. He got electrocuted by Booker T. You know he had to keep that going on, and like, like he was an L- okay. So it was an airplane. It was a story of gold dust on the airplane, and I guess the the stewardess. I think it was the stewardess came up to him and was asking questions. He was like, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he kept this Tourette's thing going. He was like, shit, shit, fuck, shit, damn, mm, yeah. Mm, then we have blue mm, dust. dust. And he just kept doing it, like, and he kept that going. This is that is where, the blue meanie? Yes. That is the blue meanie back when he was calling Gold Dust Mother. Probably one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life as a kid. I really love this. What, is he, what, what do you call this? Um, uh, what do you call this type stuff? Mimicry? Uh, mimicry, but he called Gold Dust Mommy. You know what I'm saying? It had something... In, not androgynous. That's not the word I'm thinking of. Or is it? I don't know. But there's something that goes on between... I love the whole... I mean, you know, people say, oh, that's just some gay... You know, gay or whatever word they want to use for it. I didn't call this that. I seen this as art. You know what I'm saying? But there were certain people I was growing up in life, they would look at this and go, um... Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn that shit off. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, but... For me, looking back on stuff like this, I'm like, this This is the part of wrestling I liked a lot is creativity. Creativity. You know, you know, see it as you see it, as you see it but I mean, and, 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 and at the end of the day, I mean, this is character creation, and Gold Dust is probably one of the best things to come out of wrestling since... Yeah, Gold Dust and Blue Dust, and we're underway right now. And, and this Blue Man, he always looked like slop jalop radio. He always looked like shit, but... He can sell, oversells, but I mean, he still, he still does his job. And with this match, this was like, they were together before this. And it was like this really weird group. It was a, like a weird time in wrestling, but I loved it. I loved every bit of it. Um, okay. He was calling a mommy. So and let's shirt get back gold dust to go into the intro because we usually talk about the intro oh, yeah. when we talk about these old pay reviews. So again, track. one of their things that was really fucking good about the intro is that they really had some interesting music. Yeah, it was probably some 40s, 50s music. I'm pretty sure some of it. Interesting cin- cin- some Valentine song. Cinematography. The, yeah. the the video yeah on um, the video package hyping all the different stuff like they yeah, always basically hyping Vince made, and Stone yeah I mean it was really fucking focused on her, Vince and Stone Cold and then what was the other match they, they focused on that and Cactus I and think. Cactus the man no, the Cactus and Rock Making you know rock. they showed the footage of him being handcuffed yeah. and battered up and shit um also I want to I want to point out that during this time I think this is 1999 here. Mm-hmm. Right? Or something like that in the 90s. The intro, the music during this time wasn't that, you know, it wasn't even that. No, that was Raw, actually. That song that I'm thinking about was actually in Raw. I was about to sing it, but um, that was actually Raw's intro. But when they did the, the pay per view intros and stuff, that song you heard and, and the, right before it, and that, you know, right before the, the cinematography stuff goes on, I loved it. This grinding on his leg, really weird. And, Antics and stuff. Sorry, got me off track. Train of thought, but um, but with the intro, it was very simple intro. It was very quick, not quick, but to the point. And it was, I just this time period, I really dug the music that they had. The music, the intros, the, the shows. The if you know Raw in the nineties, I mean, it was like the greatest oh, intro no. ever. 
you couldn't understand what they're saying. But Gold Dutch right just pulled Blue Mini sh- shorts up or whatever it is. His onesie. His onesie. His manzy. And pulled it up like a thong and spanked him. Yep. That's the stuff that I liked. I like that shit. Scott Hall, got the first shattered time. shattered dreams. Get ready Scott to come Hall. up. First time Scott Hall got in the ring with Gold Dust while he was doing that character, he came up to him behind him and rubbed him up the chest. Scott Hall shooted on him. Like he sh- it was like, oh, what the fuck, dude? Like, at first, Scott wasn't having that shit. Like, in like real life. Not gimmick or nothing like that. He really did have a really tough time getting through the Gold Dust weirdness. I mean, because it was <sighs> gay. Because it's it's what it is. I'm not saying nothing bad about it. Of course, everybody on the show knows. Everybody knows that listens to me. I'm for all that. But what I'm saying is, it it is coming off that way. When a man comes up behind you and rubs you sensually up the chest, it's not straight. So it threw Scott Hall for a loop, man. He he turned. He like he talked to Scott. I mean, a uh, gold dust backstage or something like that. I, I remember hearing something like that. Just talking about actually wanting to punch him for it or something like that. Because at that time it was really weird. He just thought he thought probably gold dust was going into the route with it and it won't gimmick or something. I don't know what Scott was thinking. Rest in peace, Scott Hall. You know what I'm saying? But it was, it was it's, it's always been something like that. You know, me growing up loving gold dust and the my head the headbangers, you know, I got a lot of shit for it growing up. I mean, I'm an 88 kid. I took a lot of shit for it. But, at the end of the day, I would go right back through time and take all that shit again for what I love and what I appreciate in the world of creativity and wrestling. I will go right back in time. I will fucking watch the headbangers with boob combs, loving them in their little skirt boxers, whatever the fuck. Gold Dust doing his shit. And even go gayer than that and go with Effie. Effie is the gay king, okay? And he would not be mad at me for saying this, okay? Would not be. He's one of Gold my favorites. Dust just won against Blue Meanie. So with that aspect, like, I'm loving it. Effie's Gay Brunch that he puts together this show, it's called Effie's Gay Brunch. I would love to go to one. Just because his matches are good. Like, he puts on a good show. He is there to... to... He might put people on ease. Stuff like that might put people on, you know, in a weird state of mind, but... Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna transition from that transition mm-hmm. from that because I'm pretty much said what I wanted to say about that. But this is the time period when we had Sunday Night Heat that came Sunday on night. an hour, I believe, before the pay per views. But it would come on every Sundays, but it would come on before the pay per views, and that was a good hype place where they would come because I would go to Heat first, and then those nights I wasn't getting pay per views. Well, I watch Heat, and I'm like, God damn, maybe I shouldn't watch Heat because <laughs> now I'm so hyped for pay per view I can't get. <laughs> So now I gotta wait till Monday to figure out what the fuck went on, which is the next day, obviously, because now we do Saturdays because WWE wants to steal stuff from AEW. They've never put on pay per views like well, COVID made them do it, but now they're doing it all the time. Now we're having an elimination chamber tomorrow night on Saturday, which is really weird. We got the interview with Jock Cole. I'm hoping we can get that in an hour before that, which we're, we got a we got another interview coming up, guys. Hopefully it doesn't fall through tomorrow because you know how life can, you know, fall through. But hopefully it won't fall through. He is a wrestler slash actor. He's been in some movies. He's been in some TV shows. He's been on Paramount Plus. He's been on his shows have been on Paramount Plus. Um, whatever other there is, is something else he's on too as well. And um but we're supposed to be having him on tomorrow night on the interview, and then that'll be put up somewhere in the the lingering days of February because it's Black History Month still and I want to get my last guy on for the Black History Month interview because that's all I could grab for this month two guys just fine and dandy I've got March worked on got two guys already agreed to March and I would love to get a female which Christina Marie come get high on the highest fuck podcast baby because I would love to have her and um and all that because we got a second match, Al Snow. I'm trying to get things set up for the channel. I know I haven't uploaded on the three job days. squad with head. What does everybody want? Head. What does everybody need? Head. What does what everybody get? <laughs> head. This was probably like the coolest thing. Uh as well. I mean, like I said, this time period was probably one of the greatest time periods of wrestling history because we have a man coming out here 
Well, the mannequin, the great Al Snow, legend. Help me, right, written across his forehead. Help me, backwards, written on his forehead. I guess because when he goes in the mirror and that, and he'll be like, then he can read it. Yeah. Yeah, because he talks to himself a lot in the mirror. Then you can tell that with his character. Hardcore creation. Holly. That's another thing about wrestling. If they're really good characters and at really time, captivating. At this time, he's Bob Holly. Mm hmm. If they're very captivating as a character, you know what they did to get that captivating? They stood in the mirror and talked to themselves. And worked out character facials and stuff in the mirror, people. If you wanna if you wanna get somewhere like that, you know, have your facials on point and all that stuff, mirror is where it's at, man. I remember as a kid I did this whole Kurt Angle stint where I was trying to be Kurt well not trying to be Kurt Angle, but I was trying to sound like I'm and, and do like whatever it's called, uh whatever it's called. We, and, you know. I can't think of words right now. Mimicry. Mimicry, or whatever the hell I was going to do. This. And, I, and I was, I'd do that, and I would be in the mirror, and that's how I'd be able to pull it off really good and sound good, or whatever it was at the time period that I was doing with Kurt Angle. I used to do this whole thing with Kurt Angle. It's like, I'd be like, hey, Cheryl. And she'd be like, yes, Matt, what? And then by this time, she's already irritated by me because I do it a lot, by the, you know. And she's like, yes, Matt, what is it? Is this match Kurt Angle says hardcore high. Yeah. belt title match? No, I don't think anybody came out with the belt, did they? Mm. Is this when the hardcore title was 24 hours? Yeah. Okay, so it could become a hardcore title match at some point. I guess, but they're both job squad, which is really weird. They're both part of the job squad, and if, and if nobody knows what the job squad means... Well, I guess I'm going to tell you. Oh, we had a, a fucking fire extinguisher spot. Jobbers. People who get in there and lose to a big star that aren't a star. They're called jobbers. And that's where Job Squad started. Because Al Snow was being jobbed out. You know, they were jobbers at the, at the time. So he did. He just went with it. Job Squad. It was really dope. Pin me, pay me. So that's what it means. Pin me and pay me. Yeah, I'm going to go in there and do a job for you. You can beat me all day. You can take a, I'll take a loss. Curry kid. Take a loss all day, right? Takes a loss all day. You don't care. Pin me, pay me. I can get behind that. I told the people I was working for, you can just pin me. Fuck it. I get in the ring. One move. I'm done. Let's do that. Just squash me. Put me in squash matches. I don't care what I'm doing. Just let me do something. Not easy. It would be just to squash me. Just give me one move that I'm good at doing, right? Like Sin Crowley. Choke slam me or whatever. I'm not trying to get speared by that man. I'm not trying to take a spear because I think that would be, uh, that's dangerous for me because, I mean, shit, black hole slam when I got that took done to me. I fucking forgot to tuck my fucking head at the end. Yeah, they go all over the place in this match. Mm. Hardcore style. He got the phone. Boom. Called out. He's, I think he said call collect. Call. Okay, Al Snow and Bob Holly, we got this match. This is the one. It that is for a hardcore title. It's 30 degrees outside, and they're going into the forest. Not the forest yet. They're on the outside of the building. They're, they're fighting on the outside of the building. Oh, it just took out a parking lot. It's for the hardcore title. And Matt Jackson said at this time the hardcore title was under 24 7 title rules. So. Yep. And they go all the way to the water. This is Memphis. I think they go all the way to the water in this. We got Al Snow on the job squad and Bob Holly. Bob, Al Snow just wrapped real barbed wire around Bob Holly's face. And now Bob Holly's picking up a real stop sign and smacking. Oof. You see how they're doing Al the weapons You have to know what you're doing, man. To, to not, like, injure somebody. So the way he did that barbed wire was pretty smart. Cause it, cause it, like that thing broke before he even hit him. So I, I don't know. How, I don't know if they planned any of this out here because it don't look like it, but it kind of does. Who has a wheelbarrow right out there like that? You know? Like, who has all that stuff that's out there? In the, I don't know. No. It does look like they planned it. We got a famous referee in the ring. Uh, all right. Who is it? Or I can't remember his name, but I know he's a famous one. It's not Charles Robinson. No, that's your dude. That's the Ric Flair look like. Oh, geez. See some... Down by the river. Random fence down here by the river. Down by the river down on a Friday night. night. No, it's Matt... What's his name? Matt that Chris Farley played. I live in the van down the river. <laughs> Al Snow just threw Bob Holly 
in the Mississippi River, and then Bob Holly jerked Al Snow into the Mississippi River. They said the water's got to be 35 degrees. That water is freezing right now. I mean, now. if it's 30 degrees outside, then how's it going to be 35, 40 degrees in the water? I don't know. Jerry Lawler's a dumbass. Uh, but it's fucking cold. I think he was It was high. Michael Cole oh, who Michael said, said that. Oh, uh, never mind. Re redact what I said. Retake it back. I didn't mean it. Sorry, Michael Cole. Michael on, Cole is a dumbass. No. He must. He might have got jerked around by the Rock backstage a lot back in his career, but that made him the man he is today, baby. Uh, all the hell he went through with the Rock. Remember all that? Rock picking him up, and doing this shit with him. Fuck Michael Cole. Fuck the Rock. Oh, you heard it now. No, I was playing. The Rock's okay. I just think he might need to come back to wrestling because his movies might be starting to suck. Hey, I didn't. I didn't say that. Jim Cornette did it. I think Jim Cornette said it. Uh, Ryan last. One of the other two. One of the two said it. So argue with them, not me. This is intense. It's crazy. Like, okay, so this fence thing is wild. Like, not wild. I mean, like, super wild, but it is pretty cool. Kind of takes you back to the Sabu match where he was wrapped up in that barbed wire with cactus. Pretty cool moments, I guess, in time. Um, back as kids, I think we probably had the best wrestling growing up and as kids, I yeah. mean, so to speak. But, I mean, now we've got too much wrestling we can't even handle right now. I mean, really. So much wrestling, I can't keep up with all of it. And I can't review all of it either. You got a fucking cameraman out in the woods. Yeah. You got ring lights to light it. I'm just playing. It's 1999. We didn't have ring Bob lights. Bob Polly just smacked. Spotlights. Him with a fin uh, uh, stick. He's like, we gotta get a spotlight on these motherfuckers. We got, we got fucking Al Snow with poop on his, I mean, mud on his butt, and oh, uh, he laid down in that fence. He's like, oh, I can't get out. Oh, I can't get out. Waving his arm around. Bob Holly just out. won against Al Snow in the match at first, second match at St. Valentine's Day Massacre. We have. Gold Dust just won, and then we got Bob Holly just beat Al Snow. This is right before he turns into Hardcore Holly. And we got now Midian versus the Big Boss Man, the Ministry of Darkness Midian versus the Big Boss Man. And I talked about how I liked the Big Boss Man when he turned from that blue and black outfit into yeah, the black the outfit. The SWAT team outfit. Bounty Hunter outfit, is, this version of Boss Man is the best version of Boss Man. The best. Top, top notch. I mean, he sucked his big bubba in WCW, of course. But then we got the greatest. Like, we got we got Midian coming out here with a fucking eyeball and a fucking jar. Kind of like Dan Housen with his teeth. There's a fucking eyeball in the jar. Yep. You know what? I want to go on a limb and say it's real. You could easily get that. You yeah. could easily get... Some type of maybe body part in a jar. Could have easily gotten it. It looked real enough, so I mean, whatever. And Dan Housen's teeth look real too, so I don't know. We got Midian and Big Boss Man. And Midian's the best. All right, we got Boss Man and Midian on their knees going blow for blow. On their knees, blow for blow? Yeah. You could have worded that a little better, Joe Cole. <laughs> blow for blow, folks. Big Boss Man. Something you never thought you'd see. Big Boss Man <laughs> blowing Midian. <coughs> boss oh, man that was slam. a Big Boss Man slam. Oh, oh, oh. oh and he won the match. <coughs> well, Beautiful <coughs> match. They did such a good job. Speaking of which, <coughs> that's one of my favorite finisher moves of this time period. A Boss Man slam. The Boss Man slam. That was hard. When I created my characters, that was one of my moves. Boss Man slam all day. I might have had it as a Now the rest move, of the ministry's down at ringside. We got we got the man for root, baby. And Bradshaw. Oh, the lights go out. We know what's happening. Where's Dan Housen? Where's Dan Housen? Where's Dan? Undertaker! Oh no, it's Dan Housen. I mean Undertaker. No, it's the it's the black House of Black. It's House of Black is Alistair fucking black and shit. <laughs> well nowadays that's what it is. Well if the lights go out and snow starts to fall, Sting's coming. It could be Bray Wyatt. <laughs> or Bray. Which, hey, you brought him up. Like, on SmackDown, uh, Hit Row was trying to rap in Canada. And they rap suck. And see, Top Dollar's supposed to be a rapper. I thought. We got the whole ministry coming out. They suck, right? To fuck with Big Boss. Bray Wyatt came out there with with um 
Uncle Howdy, which now confirms everything. Uncle Howdy is Bo Dallas, and if you don't believe me, wait and see, motherfuckers. Wait and see, okay? They work too good together not to be brothers, okay? They both came down the damn ring, stalking fucking Hit Row, took out Hit Row, fucking Manable Claws, and fucking then he... Then oh! Viscera just did a big splash big on the boss, man. Oh, yeah! Big Vis. Happy birthday, baby. Let me tell you. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. Let me remind myself real quick something. Um, so this month is Viscera's birthday. Happy February, Viscera. Happy birthday. But I want his wife date. Got all these dates written down for March and April. I'm doing stuff on my gaming channel. And and y'all know this. I take my breaks from this channel to do my gaming channel. Y'all know that. So oh. I've clanged and banged for the last two nights on my gaming channel. So I should be good to come back to work. Oh no, the ministry's kidnapping Big Boss Man. This a raw hold Z. Somewhere on here. Oh. Uh, this the 18th of February. Happy late birthday, Viscera. Happy late birthday, that's what I was thinking. It was a late birthday, but this and, and the big show's birthday. Oh, wait, no, tomorrow's. I don't know. Hold on. Pause. Yeah. Wait a minute, I got you. No, today's 18th. Today's the 18th. Okay, Happy so birthday, comes Viscera. Out, so Viscera's match comes out today at 6 a.m. in the morning, I believe it is. Lick My Plate Gaming comes out on there. Y'all know I run that channel. Um, so, in the Big Show's birthday, since the Big Show and Viscera was kind of close, Big Show is actually February 8th, which is my sister's birthday. Happy birthday, Big Show. So, what I did was I booked the, I, I booked the Giant, the book the Giant from WCW, versus Big Daddy V, which I have the picture of Viscera for him, whatever. But anyway, Big Daddy V versus the Giant, going out tomorrow, 6 a.m., I believe, in the morning. 6 a.m., guys, Santa's coming to town. Santa! So. Sorry, I had a Will Ferrell moment. Anyway, I know him, you know? I know him. What's your favorite color? Uh, Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? Anyway, so tomorrow that's coming out, and that is for Viscera and, and a Giant's birthday. I wanted to book them together because I don't think they've ever had, like, they, they probably had a one-on-one, but not in this, not in the Giant versus Big Daddy mm. V sense. So that's going out. Huh. I've got other February matches going out Fantasy for birthdays. Booking. I've got Ric Flair's birthday. He's got a match with Dusty Rhodes. Happy birthday, Ric Flair. His is coming up. His is the 27th, I believe. No, 25th for Ric Flair. Sorry about that. I was a little off on Ric Flair. You know, I don't like him, but he's 25th. Did something cool for him. He's facing uh, Dusty Rhodes, baby. Let me talk to you real quick. You know my boy is fighting. You know he's, he's coming up on WrestleMania, baby. WrestleMania, right, WrestleMania. Joe. WrestleMania. Joe Cool. WrestleMania. Is the... My boy, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> He gonna take Roman Reigns down. Got, Roman Reigns is one of my boys. We you got know Dusty. That. I trained Roman Reigns. You I never trained. Tra yes, yes, baby. I never trained my boy. Mm. I did what Dale Earnhardt did. I trained Jeff Gordon. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, baby? You can't just go out there and give your son everything. They gotta learn to defend of themselves. So they come up like you did, baby. Like pork and beans. But, but Dusty. Dusty. With kings and but queens. Dusty. But Dusty. Look at Cody now. He's great. He's going to win the title. Yeah. And guess why? Because you never did. Because I never did and I never trained my boy. I might have worked with him a little bit, but I was never around, baby. I had to work. I had to work for the pork and beans. I had to work. I had to work. I had to bring my babies home something to eat. Dustin Rose, my junior, and my Cody Rose, baby. I had to bring them home. Bring it home to them, baby. So, yeah, I trained other guys. Yeah, Roman Reigns was my guy. This connection is getting kind of low, so I got to go. Yeah. We All got right. Mark Henry was cool. and D'Lo Brown with Ivory next in a tag team match. Finally, Matt gets his tag team match. Yep, get a tag team match. And we get D'Lo Brown. D'Lo's... D-Lo's making, D-Lo's making a, a, a sign like he's getting ready to take the title. So it looks like Mark Henry and D-Lo are fighting for the titles in this match. Against Outlaw. Was it Jeff Jarrett? No, it was Jeff Jarrett. And Jeff Jarrett and somebody, I think. I believe. I'm on correct. That was cool. We had a Dusty Rhodes visit. 
He had to get those words out to the people. <coughs> Even as he didn't have to like, <coughs> he didn't, <coughs> damn it, he didn't have to like justify himself in any way about his baby Cody Rhodes at all. <coughs> but <coughs> people need to understand. <coughs> Earnhardt didn't train Dale Earnhardt Jr. He didn't help him. He didn't do nothing. Because why? He wanted them to come up like he did. He wanted them to learn like he did. And, uh, that's a different story when it's a father-son thing. Although, <coughs> I'm a little different. <coughs> but not too different. Um, <coughs> you want to teach your kids stuff? It is Jeff Jarrett. <coughs> you can teach Jeff your kids Jarrett. Stuff. <coughs> oh, <sorry. coughs> Jeff Jarrett and Deborah. <laughs> and, 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 and Mungo. Versus no, Owen. Owen, Owen, Owen Hart. Owen. And, and Owen, Owen Hart. I was at a thought D-Lo of Brown and Mark Henry. Enough is enough, and I'm not a nugget. Rest in peace, huh, Owen. Don't piss me off. I'm not a nugget. Remember that shit? Enough is enough. We got, I am not a nugget. We got two women out here who are going to get into some shit, too. Uh, I, Ivory and Deborah. Yeah, I mean, I would like to hope so. And you know what? It's wild. That maybe the viewers are not thinking about because I don't know my age group here, but uh, if my cor- my memory's correct, Stone Cold's married to Deborah at this point, mm. so she's just Jarrett's valet right now. Yep, yep, yep. That's how crazy wrestling can get. Mm. You could be Lana and Rusev, but most of the time it don't happen. You'd be Maria Canellas right. and Mike Bennett too. We like we got D Lo Brown I mean, and Mark Henry, D Lo Brown and Mark Henry versus and Jeff Shawn Jarrett. Out. And Owen Hart. Yeah, Owen Hart, tag team man, match. Was, uh, Henry and D-Lo. All right, we got... Mark Henry and D-Lo. Mark Henry oh. just took the bump from Owen Hart. You got to look at that little the tiny shit, dude. Guitar bump from Jay's yeah, guitar. Yeah, he hit them in the leg. Right in the kneecap. Mark, just there is no other better way to do out. that. Mark great. Henry, you're the greatest. And dude. then fucking Jeff Jarrett put the figure four on him. It was a great finisher to the match. Like, it was, was awesome. That was fucking amazing. Jeff... Jarrett and Owen Hart win the tag team champions. I think we can do stay, this. Re- remain the tag team. We do champions. this high as fuck podcast. You would think that would be like high as fuck. We don't talk and like we're asleep and you know zoning out and shit. But no, we're in detail. That shit. was we're like, good. We're looking at all these little details and matches. Going, holy shit! That he took that so great. There's no other way of taking that. Bump. No other way. Oh yes. Oh my god. Brian panties. There. Ivory. Ivory. Ivory ripping off the. Shirt of Deborah. Of Deborah, cause she's mad. She's like, I have to be out here in my bra. I'm gonna make you be out here in your bra. She might have been married Bitch. to Steve McMongo. Or Steve, not Steve. Steve McMongo. Yeah, Steve M- McMichaels. Steve Mongo Michaels. Yeah, I was saying it all fucked up. High as fuck podcast. Thank you. High as fuck podcast. Take you a hit. Smoke you a, hit. Joint. Smoke you a, a hit. joint. Hit you a hit. Drink you a drink. God damn it. Tell me how you be. Comment on these videos and tell us what you want us to watch next. You know what I'm saying? I had a We're going to keep comment. watching this shit. I had a comment on my Lick My Plate gaming channel and someone suggested me to do a match to put up uh, Hercura Sheeta versus Jade Cargill. And I'm like, okay. I'm, that's going up. That'd be going up. I don't know when, but I guess I'll figure out the name of the person and I'll tag them in the video when it comes up. And they'll be like, oh, thanks. You listened. But... So that's been happening. I'm over. Cool. I'm over my 309 now. I'm at like a 311 subscribers yeah, over like there. Like and follow, subscribe, comment, like and subscribe Tell us on this what one. What you want us to watch? Come on, y'all. I'm at 300 and like a lot. We'll do it. We'll respond. I'm and over we'll watch it and We'll review it for Man, you. Man, you know what I do on YouTube? I go on like everybody's comments, bro. I go through there for like an hour and just like Dude, liking everybody's comments. That Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart match and D'Lo Brown and, and, and Mark Henry match was good. I know. For the time period, too. Because, you know, everybody talks about how they the golden years. And they are. There is a lot of bad stuff within that time. You had a turkey coming out of an egg. You had, you know, you, you had some pretty crazy Dumb shit. shit. Yeah. yeah. That actually made something at the time period. It's the time periods. Time periods. You have to flow with time periods in wrestling or any type of thing you're doing because if you can't flow that's with what time Mark periods, Calloway did well. I mean, this Mark Calloway great. did well is he adjusted? But he, but once he was debuted at the Undertaker, he kept that name 
through the whole. That is true. But he was able to adjust. But he his did character. that because on his own merit, because he himself and his mind and stuff was built for that shit. Before he even knew he was built for it, he was built for it. For some odd, for some reason, these people, like certain guys, that go out there and they get one name. Well, I mean, he had multiple names before. You know, he had the Punisher and all these other names. You know, Mean Mark Callis and all this other stuff. But once he made it to the WWE, he was the Undertaker. And it stuck with him because he had... It, it was already built in his DNA, man. He could just... He said, okay, I'm taking I've it. Said I'm it, running with it. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The Mark man. Calloway can take shit and turn it into gold. And yep. he did it. And it was fabulous. And A he zombie will always be... Voodoo Doctor. I think is what he is. Be the greatest zombie wrestler of all time. And dead zombie. And he was <laughs> able right. to change you think about pitching, with the times that he needed to change. Yeah. But he was able to adjust his character as he needed to, which is what kept him fresh and kept him relevant for thirty years. Yeah. So take this though in in in, in consideration though. Okay, you're getting pitched this idea and you're like, okay, so you're gonna be an undead zombie voodoo something other blah 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 and your name's the undertaker pal what do you think and i'm Vince man and you're undertaker you're over there just like uh, undead zombie voodoo where the fuck are you at where are right. we going with this where you know like yeah. what the hell like you you think about Vince and he's like Come here, pal. I got a good idea for you. Oh. Uh, your first name is going to be Bill, right? Your last name is going to be Ding. Bill Ding, pal. Bill Ding. Our next match is Ken Shamrock. And you Shamrock. have to go out there and make that shit work. Ken Shamrock and Val Venus. Man, Val Venus is Ken is Shamrock's taking sister. a shower with Kim Shamrock's sister earlier. That is, yep. that, this is traumatic. It's traumatic. It's Ken Shamrock Ken, and Val Venus. <laughs> Val Venus. Take a this shot. This is the Smart Podcast. <laughs> Take a shot, boy. Take Smoke a Smoke you a joint. Woo! We got Ken Damn, Shamrock we got Ken and Shamrock. Val Venus yep. getting ready to fight for the Intercontinental Championship. Ah, uh, European, maybe. European. Or maybe it's the Intercontinental. Who knows? Um, oh, man. Some backstage shit. Be a rough housing, boy. You got a uh, MMA fighter, UFC guy, legit, versus a porn Another star. Another one of those guys that I will always say, kind of like what... Um, he took the woman. There's another guy we talked about. He took about. his sister away. Was, he came and rescued his sister. Oh, you didn't Benoit. know? Benoit. Benoit. Um, there's another one. <clears throat> it's just not very good on the microphone, but they're talented. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those peoples. Like Top Dollar. There's one guy that we talk about a lot, though, when we talk about that. Oh, man. Bad guys on the mic. Yuta? No. He's bad. Um, mm, I don't know. Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko. Boring yeah, on the boring microphone. Fuck, but but so good technical. and talented. Bret Hart. Dude. Oh, Lance Storm. Lance He's Storm. a good one. Yeah. Okay, now my mind's brewing. People are. Hey, I think I mean, boring. People that are good on the microphone. Daniel Bryan. Are bad on the microphone, but they're good in. Sorry, what Daniel. They do. It is the truth, though. He did back in the back in the day. He was boring as fuck. Daniel Bryan when he first yeah. started, because he didn't have nothing at the time. So of uh, course there was a time before the yes movement up. when they yeah. finally got the yes movement. Oh, going. then he was fucking. He's hype and he's still hype. And I, I love that man. That's why I like. All that in the beginning, I like changed my tune real quick. That yes movement, damn. Kane and Daniel Bryan was good. That fucking yeah. shit, was even good. though it was kind of dumb with the the little segments and on Smackdowns and Rolls or whatever. I mean, of had. course it was, but it was good shit. So this is Ken Shamrock's sister. Um, Ken Shamrock, sister and Val Venus. Something Shamrock. Ryan Shamrock. I cannot. All right. My wife me can't remember her name, but yeah, Ryan Shamrock. And we're they're gonna, fighting for her love. We're gonna oh, go, I'm just playing because they sisters. We're going to go watch this match. We'll be back. Coming at you live. Right, Billy cool. Gunn is acting like his shoulder's hurting every time Val Venus pins Ken Shamrock. He doesn't like either of them. I don't know why he's pretending like his shoulder's hurting when, he, when Val Venus is winning. I don't think he actually cares who is 
who in, is in the ring fighting. I don't, he understand, probably won't I don't even understand title. why Billy Gunn is in the match. I don't know why he's in the match either, but he has got some um, what do you, booty shorts on. Booty shorts, yes. They're really tight-ass booty shorts. They are tight. I mean, but I, you know, he's built like a god, so I guess that's how gods dress. And then he's wearing a, a belly shirt. I mean, they all were, I mean, <clears throat> like chiseled out of stone at this time period. I mean, I would say their physiques were on fleek, man. I'm yeah, just saying. They do they, look good, all of them. They were, yeah, very built. Like Val Venus, jeez, man. I can look past that porno stuff real quick. Porn star shit, look right past it. Boom, I see a wrestler. I don't see that damn gimmick that he had with him. I'm just, this match is for the Intercontinental I title. Never even, we did figure that out. <laughs> They really didn't even have to put the porn star gimmick with him. He could have just been just that. He could have just been who he was without the porn star shit. Oh, that's a unique pinning combination. How about that for erasing some history? How about that? How about, can we go back and he's not a porn star at all and he just does what he does and doesn't have to be completely all that? He can have something different with it and we just take and just scrub out that porn star thing. That was the only thing I, you know, like that. I just was like, wow. <clears throat> but anyway, so I mean, he was. Ken Shamrock. <laughs> it could have just been someone and who stole the girl. This is a good match. I always, re I always, re I always recognize this one shirt in the crowd. It's a Dallas Cowboy shirt. And it just says Dallas across the chest, right? It's right there. Mm. And that always catches my eye. And this sign right here, this green X, DX. this little kid over here sitting all by himself. Where is his mommy and daddy? Where is his peep at? You got this girl coming down the stairs with her belly all out. Didn't probably they say it was mom. 30 degrees outside? She's probably pregnant again. They said it was 30 degrees outside. Why has this girl got a belly shirt on showing all her belly? All the way up. She wants the wrestlers to think she's sexy. I mean, she was. She got every right to be. But, why she wear that no damn weather? It's 30 degrees outside. She's trying to, and get, she's they trying were to in, get laid by a wrestler, Matt Jackson. They were, in, they were in warmer water than it was outside. How is it 35 degrees or 45 degrees in the water if it was 30 degrees? Because it was just summertime. Just summer, summertime. <laughs> <laughs> now it's February. February 14th on this day was... Think Valentine's Massacre when they massacred people. You know the it people. was warm on Valentine's Day. Recently. You know, you know not yet has one motherfucker been massacred. That is true. For Valentine's. <laughs> Nobody has been although, offered up although, as a sacrificial Holly, lamb yet. Hardcore Holly and... and, and, and that was Al a slobber Snow. knocker. That was a slobber knocker. No one's been chopped up or sacrificial lamb for the fucking massacre of Valentine's. They think Saint that Valentine's it's gonna, too. Kid Rock and Mankind is going to be a massacre. Kid Rock? I mean, the <laughs> Rock. <laughs> and Mankind. This man just said. High as fuck This podcast. man is fancy booking on a <laughs> 1990s show. Now I'm going to have to book that on my gaming channel. What did you say? Kid Rock versus Mankind. Mankind. All right, well, I'm writing that down. That's going to happen. And it's going to happen dude, probably this show, too. Dude, we'll do it on my birthday. We'll recreate St. Valentine's Day Massacre for my fantasy booking. All right, we'll, we'll do that, too. We'll do the old fantasy booking nooking. We'll nook that book and book them nooks, because I like to nook them books. Nooking books is what I do on a daily basis when I'm nooking, 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 nooking. Oh, Billy Gunn stopped. He didn't put his hand down for the three count. No, oh, he... That motherfucker. When Ken Shamrock was pinning him. Was he Kid but Rock? But he let... And I just saw Kid Rock up for a download, too. Kid Rock versus... What was it? The oh, Mankind. Oh! Mankind. Val Venus was putting <laughs> Kim Shamrock to sleep. But then Ken Shamrock did a back uh, backdrop. Now, for your birthday, we are going to be doing a, what did I say, a fatal four-way tag team match. A whole where, fantasy <clears throat> Where it's you and Cactus Jack versus me and my partner, uh, James 
the Brinkmaster and I, our friend Mike's character versus Scott Hall and Kevin Nash in a fatal four way for the tag team titles. Mm -hmm. I don't know which tag team titles yet. But. And then. I don't know what I have available. And then. On that account. Because I have multiple accounts for. D Generation X. Because I have different um, characters on each game on each account. D Generation X versus the Brothers of Destruction. Very tr tr strategic. For the here. other tag team titles. Strategic. 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 For the other tag team titles. Oh, yeah? What tag team title? Oh, I thought these matches were over. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like... No, Ken Shamrock like, won, but then... Like, for a minute, I was like... But Whoa. then, Mr. Ass did not do the three count. He refused when Ken Shamrock had him pinned. Oh, he's an asshole. Billy Gunn is one of my favorite wrestlers in this time period when I was playing that game Attitude. I beat that game with Billy Gunn. Oh, Valveen is shaking oh, his ass. Wow. That was that stuff right there, man. That was that stuff when they were like, you can't do that. No, I'm just playing. But uh, that would that would get the crowd going, and the crowd would like kind of pop for that. They would go, oh, yeah. you know, whatever, say, you know, be um, vocal during that point. Oh, Shamrock pulled Val Venus off the top yeah. rope. So I don't know. I have seen nothing but good stuff during this. Oh, oh good shit. That's a good. Like I said shit. earlier with Owen Hart, uh, the best freaking insecurity in the business. Hardcore Holly has the best oh, drop kick. That was a nice Hurricane Hardcore Rana. Holly and Randy Orton have the best drop kick. Hurricane Rana? Um, Frankensteiner? Like a Frankenstein, the best Frankensteiner? No, that was just, I was talking about that. It was move, a weird one. But I was when, trying to see. When guys this size doing Hurricane Rana, just for me, just, I don't know. I don't really care. If Ken Shamrock does Hurricane Rana, it doesn't look, doesn't look right. I mean, it looks okay at the time, you know, whatever, but, I mean, I don't know. I just don't really care about it. But, uh, Ken Shamrock got the ankle lock. I think the best. On Val the Venus. Best hurricane, and Val Venus' girlfriend pulls him to the ropes. Right, right, Mysterio. Freaking Leah. She was good. Ryan Shamrock pulled. Her brother, Ken her, Shamrock. No, out. Val Venus. Oh. To the ropes. Oh, she so smacked her brother. Shamrock couldn't get in there. And then she smacked the shit out of her brother. Actually, her brother's her father's mother's brother, mother feller brother. Oh, oh get him in there! Get Billy him Gunn Billy beating Gunn. him up. <laughs> Billy Gunn was the man. I love this man. He made he made Val Venus beat Ken Shamrock. He's lame. I don't understand why he wanted Ken Shamrock to get beat by Val Venus. Knowing he's gonna get beat up because he's he's now he's not a referee now. Speaking of referees, we're gonna have a referee on the show. We're gonna have in a in March. A interview with a referee. Yep. Bobby Gardner. Hey We're gonna Bobby get Gardner. a guy that's been all over the place refereeing matches. Cause referees mm. do matter, man. Mm. We when, just had we're gonna Val start, Venus. We're going to start Referees Matter in March. March when, is going to be for referees. The Intercontinental title because Mr. Ass gave him the Intercontinental title. And now Mr. Ass is beating up Val Venus because he wants the Intercontinental title. Oh, and he thought Val Venus would be the best suck it, suck it, chance. Suck it, suck it, suck it. That might have... And Mr. Ass is part of D-Generation X because he just did the suck it symbol. Yeah, yes. Billy Gunn, like, he was, he's just one of those those guys that just transcended wrestling. They just yeah. made, made it better than what it was already, you know? Like, yeah, just did a lot for the business. Val Venus penis, he did it great. I don't understand why they would want, Val, why Billy Gunn would want Val Venus to have the Intercontinental title if he would was going to try to win it. Who knows? Maybe he thought he'd want to face, uh, face, uh, Val Venus. Penis. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, they had that angle where kind of choppy choppy hips pee pee. Mm. They had the whole chopping block and he was tied up and they're like choppy choppy to pee pee. Mm. Yeah. 
Oh, that was a crazy, crazy Kevin Powell gimmick shit going on there. It was crazy shit, dude. Um, but <clears throat> crazy Kevin Powell. Big match. Go down the crazy. Kevin it was Powell. good. It was a good match. Stuff. Ooh, that was a crazy clothesline. Good stuff. Just uh, suck it, suck it, suck it, time. Suck it. Chop, chop, chop it up. And Valvinus walks to the back with the intercontinental title. No, and Ryan right. Shamrock in tow. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you want to see on the Highest Fuck Podcast and what you want us to listen to and watch. Yeah, exactly. Tell us something. Mr. Socko, Mankind, it was choking out some Vince McMahon. Uh, Mr. Socko and Mankind, we're getting into the end of the line. The Rock and Mankind. It's not just a sock. It's in an And... Last oh, that was a commercial. man ha! standing match. I don't know if it's coming up yet, but that was just a commercial for the Mr. Socko shirt. I thought it was part of the damn pay-per-view for a minute, but that was just this commercial. Ah, damn. Goddess. Oh, Got him. Dang. It was 1999 to 2023. Still got us. We will be back. Uh, All right, guys. We're back on the highest fuck podcast. Oh, we got glizzies. And we got glizzies, thanks to Matt Jackson. But we got cheddar brats. We got Triple H and X-Pac. Wrapped in turkey. Triple H and X-Pac in DX versus China and Kane Mm. in a tag team match. China is my father. A sign in the crowd said, China is someone's father. This is going to be a good match. I'm excited about it. Oh, yeah, we have... China's great. The corporation of China and Kane. China and Kane was a great thing to do. He's wearing a China shirt. It says Syndrome. China Syndrome. Oh. Know. The ring psychology. He just wiped his ass with it and then threw it in her face. That's some fucked up shit. Triple H is like, we found you in some freaking... Um, Jim. I love Triple H. Yeah. He's great for, like, someone like bringing some talent and do some work with. And work Perfect with heel. He's great. He's great with everything. Um, him doing so much stuff with, like, NXT and stuff, you know? So, yeah. Well, um, we got Shane on commentary. Triple H starting the match off with Kane. Yep. And look, I think it's psychology for them Triple H to be wearing the same colors. Mmm. Like, I'd be like, this is my tag team. If I was doing this as a mm. kid, I would put them two together. If you would have gave me, what are you wearing, Triple H? What are you, you know, I'd be like, okay, you're all tag team. And it's going to be y'all two versus X Pac and who else is in the match? China. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense too, I guess. Matt. I want to thank you for something. They look cool together. I want to thank you for something. You, I've been sitting here thinking during this whole match. You have given me a way to tell where Hunter was just now Hunter and is now turning into Triple H. These tights are the perfect way to know. He used to be like, He's in that transition period right now. He had the type that were the color and sizes yeah. before. Before his transition to just the underwear trunks. Nope. He was trying to... He goes from... Okay, this is what I was tight. Uh, look, I'm going to change it. Not not much. I'm gonna change it about this much. See where it goes, and that's a gradual growth of a character. Mm-hmm. But I think in my childhood, like his, just stood out the most. For tights. All right. Stuff like that. And I know you're really like tights. Then ring gear is really important to you. Yeah. So. I mean, if you go out there with slop shit. You know, you got to make Foley be able to do that. Yeah. 
or there are certain people that can pull that gimmick off. Balls Mahoney, you no, know, you know, I don't know, quite quite other people. This crowd was very ruthless because you have some really obscene like crowds. Look, sign just got taken. People just took a sign out of the crowd. Mm -hmm. Um, fucking security probably said China has the penis mm -hmm. in the crowd. So that might sound funny, but it's not. Serious business, boy. Some bullshit. Oh my gosh. I had to do that. That's what I was talking about earlier. That's the move I had to try out. It was the same thing as what he just did to him. Same thing. Picked up and dropped. But anyway. And you know, X Pac and, and Kane were attacked him. I know. So. Alright, guys, we'll be back. Right, we're going to watch this match. We got Triple H tagged in by X Pac at the tail end of the match. Triple H is about to beat the shit out of. Yep, there he goes. Kane in China. X Pac comes in to beat I'm up Kane. I'm confused because Triple H is red and black, so is Kane. And you're thinking that would be a good tag team. The whole time you're watching, you're like, that would be a good tag team if that would be today. But. Yeah. I keep getting confused on who's on whose side. Because there was that night in China. What is China about to do right here? We got X Pog in China's been a thing before, so that night in China. Oh, we had the knee lift by Triple H on China. But then, China, China and Triple H. <coughs> the match is free. With who's tagged up? Pretty well. They've all been tag team partners. Yeah. Right, X Pog and Triple H. Except for maybe Kane and Triple H. Yeah. But, the way they look right here, I would have booked that. I would be like, y'all going to be my tag team champion. Oh, he's making her. The damn. Bronco Buster. Bronco Buster. Or by Xbox on China. So, it was and just Shane like, comes in and punches Xbox in the back of the head. It was just like their porno tape. He probably did that. On a night in China. I don't remember him doing that. But. He did it, folks. Oh. Is Triple H about to pedigree China? Oh, the knee, knee lift. I love that. He's got like one of the best ones. I need the double A spine buster. No. Oh, here comes Kane. That would be cool to get it, darn. See if she can take it. I like the old ones. Choke slam. By Kane. And then China pulled pins yeah, to blade. Choke slams, other than Undertaker. Undertaker was so good. He had the choke slam, he had the tombstone, and he had the last ride. Yep. Damn. I always thought it was crazy because they brought in Kane and they did the same the same moves. They yeah. were like, yep, he's going to be same thing. Now you got to help China up. Oh. And get her up. But he hurt. Yeah. Don't treat her like a man. Don't treat her like a woman. Just treat her up for who she is. China just won the match. With she Kane. is the man before Becky Lynch was the man. We got Kane and China, and Kane and China just won the match against Triple H and X Pac. Great match. The corporation just won their match because Kane choke slammed Triple H and China, and he rolled China over on him. Boom. Bronky Buster. Well, that, that move is just weird in the first place. I don't see how it hurts. I mean, I go. I don't know. Maybe. I've never had it done, so. It'll just be too weird. I mean, just too. 
Oh no. I wouldn't want to be on my face to be covered like that in a move like that. Just in general. Certain moves I probably wouldn't do anyway. So. Just wouldn't do them. Alright, y'all. from Mayor. Next is The this Rock man, be my Mankind. Time. Last Man Standing. And we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, we had some lazy booking in the lazy. Rock Mankind. Great match. Lazy. False count anywhere. I quit. Last man standing match. And they did not. Neither one of them could answer the 10 count by the end of the this last man standing been going match. On for it was a hours. good fucking match. This is a fight it was all hard night. hitting. It was good. It went all over the building. Mick Foley took a bunch of heavy this spots. The Rock took forever. a bunch of heavy spots. They have good chemistry. They have always had good yeah, chemistry. As the Rock and Sock connection, as opponents, they're good. Yeah, like, it's and, really I mean, fucking good. That, that's all you need in wrestling is chemistry, skill, know-how, the determination, the mind for it. The thoughts for it, the, the, the everything, the heart and soul, as you say. I mean, that's why people say, you know, blood and tears and blah blah blah, because that's what they do as performers. And then, as you're looking at it, you're seeing lots of elements of, you know, maybe you know the wrestling, the indie wrestling coming out of like Cactus Jack being put on the rock, because this is you know Dirty BF. It's a whole different ball game when it comes to wrestling at hand, you know, so but you can see a lot of that that old like the the way it's supposed to be done, I guess, in this match. And it still be entertaining without it being entertainment. If that makes any sense. Like it's entertainment obviously, but it's not the WWE part. It's WWF still, so they still had that like you know still real to me, damn it. Yeah. Type vibe. And I don't know. It was just a good like, overall good good match with the It was good. The the whole show too with the punches, the selling of everything, the bag bumps, the chest bumps into the freaking turn post and a lot of that happened. And then you had the one The knee the bump over back. the steps. We had the knee thing for Cactus Jack, our mankind going over. He's just I mean, that right there I think uh made his career in some form of fashion. That one move alone did wonders for his career. Taking that knee, boom, right across that, or anything that mankind did technically did. But it, for this match to end in a no DQ, or I mean, I did no DQ, I uh, no DQ. I, I, uh, I know it keeps them no both contest. looking strong going into it, WrestleMania. It does, and it's a no contest, but. Um, Plus, you know, we're supposed to believe they whooped each other so bad they couldn't, neither one of them could win, which is believable because that's what we just saw. Yeah. I mean, that's really what just happened. That's happened. That happened. Okay, that happened. They beat each other so bad and I really, that they couldn't function. I like the way man come look. The look. His, the tie was perfect. The white shirt was perfect. The brown. Oh, we got the this whole lead up to going out to the ambulances and everything. We just look like fucking stars out there. Except for Rock, he's wearing his regular clothes. Wearing his little famous black outfit that he made famous. Looking like Elvis Presley. And, um, you know, we love Elvis Presley over here. All he's, right. He's all stretched. They're putting the all... Rock on the stretcher. Now they're rolling Mankind out on the stretcher. Mankind must have been something else to do on that gurney. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, Mick Foley always wanted to walk out of arenas on his own power. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I wonder whose motorcycle that is. Probably the Undertaker's. Probably. But. The whole ambulance thing is just it was it's perfect. Good shit. It looks. I mean, hell, I mean, if I didn't know any better, you know, 
be thinking, yeah, this is real shit. Back then we would have been, because this oh, was yeah. 99. We were 11. We oh, would have yeah. been thinking this was real. Definitely th thought and believed 100%. Completely, utterly. There's no... I'm not saying it's fake. Definitely not saying it's fake, because who knows what. But Oh, yeah. We got one more match to go on the St. Valentine's Day match. It is a TV show, though, by the way. This is a TV show. So, camera tricks... But who's to say what is real and who's not? But if you see that X being thrown up by a referee, it's definitely real. Bro, I've seen wrestlers do it too. All right. You'll see a wrestler throw up the X. Yo, we got injury. All right, guys, we Did got one more it? match. Who is it? On the pay per view, it's Undertaker, or not Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Mr. McMahon in a steel cage. And oh, we'll yeah. be back. Let us your darkness coming up there and kill your ass. And that match was freaking crazy, bro. Like, you had Vince McMahon, you had Stone Cold, Steve Austin in a cage match. What phenomenal. You're not hearing Joe right now. Cut the sleepy time with Joe. Sleepy time with Joe because it's welcome to the highest sleepy time with Joe podcast. And... Joe is a sleepy, sleepy, sleepy in the cherry, cherry, chair right about now, and now, and now. And um, he's seen this match before anyway, but this match was good. I mean, the hatred Stone Cold had for Vince, the hatred Stone, uh, Vince had for Austin, it was like the same hatred. And it was just a great match. Um, just phenomenal. Uh, I guess, you know, with the, the whole, you know, I mean, like, he's 77 years old. No, I'm just playing. He's not 77 years old. But this man is, is, you know, I don't know how old he was right here. But going through the table, the announcer's table from the top of the um, cage, pretty wild. Um, like, you had, the match was a pretty long match. Uh Crazy as hell match, uh, but you had a lot of playing, you know, had a lot of cat and mouse, you had a lot of, you know, what have you, little antics from Vince McMahon, and then just Stone Cold beating the living hell out of Vince McMahon, and Vince McMahon just keeps coming back, middle finger to Stone Cold, he keeps coming back, keeps coming back. Next thing you know, I mean, I, I, the whole time the match is going on, you know, you, you're just sitting there like, yep, yeah, a good match. You got the boss, which this year, like previous to this, he had won the Royal Rumble. So, Vince McMahon, you can hear him snoring in the background. You got uh, Joe Cool in the background snoring as well. Uh, 1999, you know, the Royal Rumble, this was the one where, you know, I thought 1999 was the one, or the Rock one, but I guess that was 98 or something like that. But, uh, you had Vince McMahon winning the Royal Rumble. So, Stone Cold don't like that. So, he, you know, they get the, the cage match. And you're wanting, everybody's wanting Stone Cold to go to the main event of WrestleMania that year anyway. But, match is going on. You know, Stone Cold's going over the top of the cage, you know. And then Vince McMahon's flipping him off. And then he gets back in the ring with some more ass. Then the next thing you know, after all that, all the antics and stuff... Next thing you know, man, of course, you know, everybody knows that the big show, Mr. Giant, Paul White, busts out of the freaking arena, out of the floor, and attacks Stone Cold, and Vince is like, pick him up and chunk him into the fence, and, uh, then I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this spot, and he fucking throws him into the freaking cage, cage breaks, and he falls, and he wins, he ends up winning, the match, and so it'll be, you know, Stone Cold versus um, Mankind for the championship. Because Mankind was, is the champion right now, and right now what's come up next is uh, the UK. So, uh, the UK tournament, the first one, or something like that. It's something UK I'm watching right now. Came on after St. Valentine's Massacre, and uh, just great. Like, the whole pay-per-view was a good card. Uh, the build-up to the main card, or the main match of the main card, is great. It was great. The build-up was perfect. 
and everything was good like that. You know what I'm saying, dog? All right, well, Joe is uh, awake and with the world again, uh, as y'all heard my views on the match. Yeah, the match was incredible. Stone Cold and Triple or Stone Cold <laughs> and McMahon, that was a strong match. Yeah. Very hard hitting. I got the bloodiness. Bloodiness. Fingers. Seeing McMahon bleed, Stone Cold bleed, it's always good. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Stone Cold didn't have to bleed that match, which was good. Uh, but in that match, uh, you had the big table bump at his age. Yeah. Coming off the side. Great. He took that great. Uh, he had the big show, Giant. Break through the ring and get in the ring as mm -hmm. well. So, and that's how like Stone Cold won the match and all that. By picking him up and throwing him in there, and Stone yeah. Cold goes out the side. So, yeah, so good. And he swings out on the steel cage and like it opens up. Yep. Yeah. And he Crazy. Just drops and like, well, I won. Anyway, the hell, I was gonna win like four or five times already. Before this actual time, because he went over the cage, he was almost to drop that one time. He, then man, McMahon comes up flipping him off, and Stone Cold's like, "Fuck you, motherfucker!" And he's like, "All right, motherfucker!" He stomps up, damn motherfucker, comes over, beats the damn ass, stop mud all that shit. And I just think that was great TV back in the day. You could, you can't do Tony Khan versus like MJF right now, or anybody at that caliber right now. You could do it. Because yeah. Tony Khan would get his ass whooped. McMahon, he could take it because he's conditioned for it. He's uh, he said he's not gonna make his guys do anything he wouldn't do. That's his motto. He would he wouldn't he would make anybody do anything that he wouldn't do. And he's proven that countless times before in like ridiculous storylines or taking a bump or when Grunk came in that Crunk that one time that Grunk dude he came in Grunk? He, yeah he's gonna do that top thing off thing fall right. McMahon said, look, I'm going to show you how to do it. And he got up there at his age, 70 some years old, and did the whole thing that he wanted to grow up to do. So he's not going to get you to do anything he wouldn't do. So um, he'll have to be like in a wheelchair and can't, absolutely cannot do nothing before he's obviously getting you to do something you wouldn't do. Yeah. But that's what's good about him. He's always been like that. And so for him to give him... Give us his all in that match against Stone Cold was pretty badass in 1999. I mean, it really was. I mean, in 99, we were on to something already. It just, once 2000 hit, that's when everything fucking changed over and everything looked different, you know, especially with, like, SmackDown coming mm -hmm. about and all that. Uh, we still had Owen Hart in 99, so, I mean, and this is Valentine's time, Valentine's of February, so... I don't know exactly when he died, <clears throat> but it is kind of crazy that, that it was that close to 2000. So mm -hmm. we, we would have could have had we could have had Owen Hart, like I, you know, God, keep going, but yeah, you know, that'd have been cool. Um, and of course, he was in the match earlier, and uh, just I mean, he was just phenomenal. He had the greatest in security. I don't know, it was great shit, great shit. Anyway, this has been the, the highest fuck podcast with your boys, Mad Jackson and Joe motherfucking cool. Happy Valentine's Day, y'all. Yeah. And uh, come as again, like, comment, subscribe. Exactly. Do do what the man says to do. And we will be having interviews now in the future. And we will see you in the next, next one. Time. We're out like Elvis Presley. Yes.